Are we live? Okay. Hey guys, good morning. My name is John. I'm with Top Gun Heating and Air. And uh, this morning we're just going to go through this commercial 10 ton package unit. Uh, it's made by Carrier. Um, we're just going to talk about a few of the uh, parts and components um, that are in this. And we're going to go through what we would do in terms of maintaining the system. Um, we came to this unit this morning. Um, actually, we were on it yesterday. Uh, we changed the belt. Um, the belt was loose and uh, had been chewed up. So um, the first thing that we did was um, change the belt, adjusted the pulleys and the sheaves on that. And uh, we're just going to talk about um, some of the parts and components um, right now. So um, first off, this is a uh, this is a gas electric unit. So obviously, you can see your incoming gas line. Um, this assembly right here uh, is your basically your your gas fired furnace. Um, we have our our draft inducer motor, our gas valve. Uh, we've got our burner assembly back there, and then um, as you can see here, you've got um, some limits uh, switches, some safeties. This is our capacitor um, for our draft inducer motor, and below here in this section is our heat exchanger, um, and then. Obviously, this is our uh, our blower wheel and blower assembly. That's what moves all the air. Um, this is our our blower motor here itself, which is connected. Um, this this drive shaft is connected to um, the motor pulley. Um, and then we go over here. These are our uh, our two compressors. So each one is is capable of five tons. There's two circuits in this um, in this unit. <clears throat> and so these are, this is your, your air conditioning system, basically. Um, and all the, uh, all the piping for that. Um, these are your crankcase heaters. Um, those are to warm the oil in the compressor, um, to prevent, uh, slugging and hard starts. Um, just basically, uh, warms up the compressor so that it, um, it starts easier. Um, essentially, this is all interlinked. You've got um, this. These compressors pump the refrigerant through this condenser coil first. Um, we're going to go around on this side. One of the things we look for um, on these units is one, the condition of the coil. So if this coil is dirty um, or if it's got a lot of hail damage, um, basically, what's going to happen is you are going to, you're going to lose efficiency. Um, you know, the, the compressors are, are going to struggle. They're going to pull more electricity, um, because you're not getting the proper, uh, heat transfer from the air that's getting pulled by these fans on top here through this coil. So this is your condenser coil. Your compressor starts out, um, pumping vapor, hot, high pressure vapor through this um, coil here, this condenser coil, these fans move air across it and that refrigerant is then condensed to a high pressure liquid. Um, from there, it's transferred to our evaporator section. Ugh, doors are always a pain in the ass to get off. Um, these are our filters. We're going to change these out this morning. As you can see, they're kind of dirty. Um, and so we're going to take these out. We're going to change them really easy to do. And then behind that, this is our evaporator coil. Um, this is our main return air. So the air is pulled up from the building across this coil and then back down into the supply air ducts. Um, so real important, um, as important as it is to keep this clean and make sure that's well maintained um, all season long, especially during the summer um, in high load conditions, uh, it's equally as important to keep this clean and to keep your air filters clean because even the, the slightest buildup of dirt, um, dust, debris, whatever on those, uh, will cause a loss of efficiency. It will cause the, uh, the unit to work harder. So we want to make sure these are clean um, and that the coil stays clean. Um, if you're changing your filters frequently enough, you really should never have to 
to go through and clean this, but it's, it's not, it's not a bad idea to do every, uh, every year or so, or every couple of years just depends on, um, you know, the conditions of the building and stuff. But, um, what we're looking at is, is this evaporator coil. So back to the refrigeration circuit, um, after the hot high pressure liquid leaves this condenser coil here, it passes through a metering device. Um, and from that metering device, from that point, um, the refrigeration um, or the refrigerant is, is restricted. And so what happens is that that metering device only allows a limited flow through there. So you go from a hot, high pressure liquid to a low pressure liquid slash gas. It's about an A20 um, mixture. And what that does, that pressure drop, what it does is it makes that refrigerant very cold. And so as air moves across this coil, um, basically that refrigerant absorbs the heat from the air. It's removing the heat, essentially. That's what we're doing. And, um, and then it sends it through the supply air ducts. Well, as that refrigerant absorbs that heat, it's gonna boil back off into a vapor and then get sent back to the compressor. So it's a cycle. Everything just goes around in a circle. Um, but um, we want maximum airflow across both of these coils. So that's why uh, maintenance is important. Um, it can cause uh, a lot of issues if, um, if these are not kept clean. Um, and then uh, obviously you've got your fresh air intake. This is a manual damper style fresh air intake on this unit. And then you have your condensate port. So one of the things that we like to check is um, the flow. Um, sometimes you'll develop a blockage in that P-trap um, down there. That's kind of, that's a running trap. It's not really a P-trap. Um, and so um, we wanna make sure that that is cleared um, every time we come out to do a maintenance on it. And then some of the other things that we'll check are belt tension um, and the condition of the belt. We inspect the belt for cracks um for uh you know you see some of this some of this debris down here um over time the belts will get worn down and so um they won't uh turn this as at the proper rpm and so they'll need to be tightened or replaced um that's just one of the, the basic things that we do on um on these air, these rooftop units here so um and then obviously there's a bunch of other things we'll check. We'll check refrigerant pressures. We'll check subcooling, superheat, all those things. Um, check the operation of, right now we're checking the operation of the heat. Um, so we'll, we'll check gas pressure, um, incoming gas pressure and outgoing gas pressure on it. And then um, we'll take our amperage and check voltage on our compressors, on the draft inducer motor, um, and other things. So basically it just, you know, we go through everything, make sure it's working right. And, uh, and now we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, this is your electrical compartment. So this is where all your controls are. Um, these are your contactors. Um, basically these interpret voltage and, uh, from the thermostat. So if there's a call for cooling, basically at the thermostat, you'll either, um, these contactors will get energized um, with a 24 volt. So they have 24 volt input and then they also have high voltage input. So they're basically a bridge. When this um, 24 volts is applied to the coil on this contactor, it pulls in and closes this bridge between your incoming line voltage and your load, which is basically um, the voltage going to the compressor here. So um, those control the starting and stopping of those motors. Um, you've got your transformer here. This steps the voltage down. Um, so basically you have high voltage coming in and they have 24 volts on the other side of that. Um, and that's for your control circuit. So that, that powers these boards here. This board controls the operation of the furnace. Um, you've got your spark igniter on here. You've got your various relays um, that controls the operation and the sequence of operation for the furnace. Um, and then, um, You've got your main main capacitor here. This is for your condenser fan motors. Um, that will sometimes burn out. That's a common part we replace um, on these units, um, especially it seems like on the carriers. Um, on the residential side, 
the condenser fan motors um, will draw that capacitor down. It seems like almost every year or every three to four years. Um, so that's a common part we replace. Um, this is your thermostat wire. So this is basically the wire that um, communicates between this unit and the thermostat um, that controls it down in the building. And uh, that's about it. I think that's about all we got for you guys on this video. Um, we're gonna start um, doing some more videos. We're gonna go and uh, do a video now here shortly on um, a residential unit. So we're gonna talk about um, how you as a homeowner can change out your own capacitor. So um, look for that next. All right, thanks guys.